Is there a hole at your local course where when you step up to the T, this little voice in your head goes, grip it or rip it, long drive time, feed the beast. But recently I started thinking about whether it actually makes sense. Do the extra 10 or 20 yards I get from wailing on this ball actually lead to better results? So I decided to look into the stats and I found some pretty surprising things that have completely changed the way I do course strategy and given me a bit of a formula for when the smart decision is to lay up versus when the smart decision is to go for it. And that's what we'll talk about in this video. So let's get going. Hey, great to have you here. I'm Manu. If it's your first time here, welcome, and I hope you find this helpful. So this here is the 18th hole of my local course, where I tend to feel the urge to swing for the fences, uh, or for more fairway, basically. And that's where this question popped up for me. But in thinking more about it, I realized that this question pops up a lot more often than just the 18th hole, like on short par fives, on short par fours, on long par fours, it pops up a lot. So the big question is, does it make sense to swing harder to get that extra 10 or 20 yards closer to the hole? Yeah, I know it feels amazing hitting monster drives. I am definitely at the front of that line. I really go, yeah, I hit that monster drive. But let's put our math professor hats on for a second and think about it more from like a scoring perspective. So first, let's just look at proximity to the hole. So this here is a chart that I got from the internet made by Scott Fawcett and Lou Stagner. Uh, Scott runs Decade Golf. Lou is the head data scientist at Arcos and does a ton of great data work. He also has a podcast, uh, great Twitter presence, all this stuff. And looking at this chart, there's a lot of numbers here, but the column that is most valuable to me is this middle blue column, which talks about what's the average proximity to the hole when the green is hit from these different yardages, which are here on the left-hand side. And yeah, this is all pro level data, but you know, A, that's all we've got. B, it's actually a reasonable proxy because it's all relative. So I mean, we might be on a slightly different curve, but it's still relative to the shots we're hitting. And C, this is actually the best case scenario. So it's actually pretty useful for the analysis that we're doing right now. So here is that middle blue column put into a chart. I find charts to be a little bit easier to be able to tell the relative differences between yardages. So on the x-axis here, we've got yardage. On the y-axis, we've got distance from the hole in feet, and the blue columns show the reading from each location, right? So for example, the average proximity for pros from 50 yards is 12 feet, seven inches. From 100 yards is 15 feet, six inches. And from 150 yards is 20 feet, 11 inches. As an aside, I find remembering these three numbers to be super useful in just setting expectations when I play. So 50 yards, 12 and a half feet, 100 yards, 15, 16 feet, 150 yards, 21 feet. The reason for that is because in the past, I used to consider it a failure if I was like 50 yards from the green and I didn't hit it to like three feet, four feet. I'd be like, oh, pros always do that. That's what we see on the highlights. No. That's wrong. The actual data shows that pros on average hit it to 12 and a half feet from 50 yards. That means half the shots are worse than 12 and a half feet away from the hole. But now that I've understood these numbers, if I hit it inside 12-ish feet from 50 yards, I congratulate myself with some strokes gained. And if I hit it outside 12 feet, I remind myself that half of all shots by pros go outside 12 feet. So it's absolutely okay, right? Always the upbeat golfer. Okay, so back to the graph. So nothing hugely surprising here. What we see is that the closer we are to the green, the more likely we are to be closer to the hole, especially as you get inside 50 yards. But outside 50 yards, it doesn't really change very much at all. That slope of the columns is, is pretty kind of flat. And we just saw this from the numbers we talked about from 100 yards, 15 feet, six inches, from 50 yards, 12 feet, seven inches. So that means if you decide to, you know, kind of lean on your driver a little bit and hit a 350 yard drive instead of your usual 300 yard drive, you're gonna be three feet closer to the hole. Yeah. And it's not the difference between three feet and zero feet. It's the difference between 15 and a half feet and 12 and a half feet. It's not a lot. No, three feet, 50 yards, three feet. Let's use a more relevant example for the driver, for those of us who aren't leaning on it to hit an extra 50 yards. <laughs> Say a normal swing gets you to 120 yards from the green. So the average proximity for an approach shot from 120 yards is 17 feet and three inches. If you swung a little bit harder and you got an extra 10 yards, then you'd be at 110 yards out instead of 120 and your average proximity would be 16 feet and six inches. If you swung even harder, and you manage to get another 10 yards, your average proximity is 15 feet, six inches. So if you went all out, got that extra 20 yards and ended up being 100 yards from the hole instead of 120 yards from the hole, that would mean you ended up being on average one foot, nine inches closer on the green. That is 48 centimeters if you're one of my metric system homies or roughly this much. Doesn't seem like a lot, huh? But hey, here's a question. Every foot counts, every inch counts when you're talking about birdies, right? So being a foot and a half closer makes a huge difference to birdie prospects, right? That is a great point. I'm glad I mentioned it. 
to answer that, let's add in some putting data. So again, this is a great chart I got from Lou Stagner and Scott Fawcett. These guys just create some great stuff. Big fan. And here what we've got is the number of putts it takes to get down from different distances to the hole for pros, obviously. And from this, I took the average putts, which is these gray bars, and I put them on the average proximity chart we had to get an idea of the average number of putts from these distances, right? Because what we care about is birdies, right? Like it doesn't matter how close you are to the hole birdies matter. And this is what you end up with. I did make a minor tweak. The data on the putting chart is by foot, so one feet, two feet, three feet, but proximity is partial feet too, like 15 feet, six inches. So I made some straight line calculations to basically like make it all work. From 100 yards, the average proximity is 15 feet, six inches. I'm never gonna forget this number. I've said this number is eight million times now. <laughs> from 15, from 100 yards, the average proximity is 15 feet, six inches, which from there, the average number of putts is 1.81. So if we go back to our previous example, what we see is that from 120 yards, proximity is 17 feet, three inches, which means just over 1.84 putts. From 110 yards means 1.83 putts, a little lower. And from 100 yards, 1.81 putts. So the difference between being 120 yards out and being 100 yards out is 0 0.04 strokes on the putting green. Which means if you played 100 times, you'd make four more birdies. That's still four more birdies, but still, you'd make four more birdies. So once every 25 rounds, roughly. But this 0 0.04 strokes number changes from yardage to yardage, right? We're just talking about 120 to 100. It's a different number when you're thinking about 50 versus 30 or 200 versus 180. And so what I did is put together an incremental benefit chart. So this is the incremental benefit of being closer from every yardage from a putting strokes perspective. By the way, this assumes that you're getting on the green, right? This doesn't account for shots that don't make it to the green. So on the x-axis here down at the bottom is the yardage you're at. And the bars are the benefit of being either 10 yards or 20 yards closer in terms of strokes. And you see those on the left-hand side of the y-axis here. So for this one here at 100 yards, if you could be 10 yards closer, 90 yards instead of 100, that would be a benefit of 0.017 strokes, almost 0.02 strokes. Being 20 yards closer from 100, so at 80 instead of 100, you'd see a benefit of 0.035 strokes. What's interesting is you also see this kind of curve effect. I'm not sure exactly why that happens as you get into the, the farther away numbers. I'm guessing it has something to do with like stock yardages for pros when they like to hit specific irons, etc., and when they're in between. But what you do see is as you get closer to the hole, the benefit of being closer goes up significantly. So as you're in the outer ranges, kind of, you know, past to 80, 90 yards, it, it's useful. It's definitely beneficial, but not as massively beneficial as it is if you start getting inside kind of that 65 yard range. This seems small for us as amateurs, but it's pretty meaningful for pros. And it totally reinforces this idea that if you hit it farther, you will hit it closer. So it sounds like for me at the 18th hole, I should always just go for it, right? Right? Just grip it and rip it every time? Mm, maybe. There is this elf in the room that we've conveniently been ignoring for the last few minutes, which is that when you swing harder to get more distance, there's also a chance that your ball's not gonna end up in the fairway, right? Dispersion goes off. So you might end up in the fairway or the rough or bunkers or maybe somewhere else. So how do we account for that? Well, here's another fantastic chart from Lou Stagner. I really like this chart because it shows the proximity of the hole from the same yardages, but from different lies. So you've got fairway on the left, rough in the middle, and bunker on the right. And so I took this chart and I graphed it up to try to get a general idea of how things change. And the first thing that struck me was the huge difference between lies. So on this chart, you've got the blue bars are from the fairway, the pink bars are from the rough, and the yellow bars are from the sand. From this graph, it looks like pros hit the same proximity from the bunker at 50 yards as they get from the fairway at 190 yards. That's it's absurd. When I first saw this, I was absolutely blown away. Like, this is nuts. It seems like pros really, really suck from bunkers. But then I was watching the Travelers Championship last week and Rory McIlroy, Tom Kim, and Victor Hovland were playing together and all three of them hit their shots into the fairway bunker on number nine. Now, as you can see here, Tom Kim and Rory stick their approach shots. Absolutely beautiful, amazing shots. And Victor, unfortunately, had no choice but to just wedge his shot out because there wasn't room to get all the way to the green. And that made a lot more sense. This data we have here is actually an average for all shots, right? So it's a combo of both good lies in the bunker where you can stick it to the pin or bad lies where you just have to wedge out. And so that average looks a lot worse than the pro ability level of actually playing in the bunkers. For me, this was a major realization that I had literally while doing the research of this video. I used to think that if you hit into the fairway bunker, then you went up to the ball and you hit it out of the fairway bunker and it would be a harder shot, but whatever, you know, just hit it out of the fairway bunker. Mm. 
no, 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 that's not how it is. Now I know that there's three potential outcomes if you end up in a bunker or in heavy rub. Number one, you have a good lie and you can attempt to go for the green. Number two, you have a good lie, but there's something in the way. Maybe it's a bunker lip, maybe it's a tree, and you can get close-ish to the green, but not all the way there. Or number three, you have a terrible lie and all you can do is wedge the ball out and then hope your next shot gets to the green. And based on the stats, it looks like this actually happens relatively frequently. Anyway, for me, I think accounting for these this full menu of outcomes will actually be really helpful in the future because A, it'll help my decision making knowing that there's different outcomes, three different outcomes that could happen. And B, I think it'll help with my emotional response when I end up in situation number three and I got to wedge the ball out. So might be a little less annoyed because I know it's part of the overall averages that we take into account. So back to our original question of should we swing harder to get that extra 10 or 20 yards? Well, when the probability of hitting into the rough or bunkers goes up, now the average proximity numbers change. And here's a graph of what you gain by swinging harder to get those extra 10 or 20 yards if there is a chance of hitting the rough. So in this case, I've put in a 15% chance of hitting the rough or a 15% chance of hitting the bunker. I took a few liberties with this one. I basically assumed that all the shots hit the green, even though in reality, from the data we see, they don't all hit the green, or at least it's not mentioned whether they hit the green or not. But just to make things really simple, I assumed all the shots hit the green. So again, as with the other charts, we have our yardage on the bottom here on the x-axis. The blue bars are just our baseline numbers from previously, so the benefit Benefit of getting an extra 10 yards if there's no additional danger of hitting the rough or any bunkers. The pink bars are the benefit of additional 10 yards if there's a 15% chance that you might end up in the rough. And the yellow bars are the benefit of an additional 10 yards if there's a 15% chance you might end up in a bunker. And what this shows is that trying to get an extra 10 yards is great and very useful if you're likely to be in the fairway. But if there's a 15% increased chance, right, there's always a chance of being in the rough, or whatever, but there's an additional 15% chance. Maybe it's a tighter part of the fairway. Maybe there's, you know, a chance of you going more offline because you're swinging harder, whatever. So if there's an extra 15% chance of being in the rough, eh, that extra 10 yards, mm, kind of a wash, right? The ups and downs make it out to roughly zero. But what if it was 20 more yards you were getting for that 15% increased risk of being in the rough or a bunker? Hmm. Then the math changes a little bit. And this graph shows that. So same as the previous one, except now we're talking about a gain of 20 yards instead of 10 yards. And now suddenly all the numbers are positive. Huh, that's kind of great. There's a couple outliers, we won't talk about those. But in general, it makes sense. There's a bigger benefit to being 20 yards closer, so it's worth a higher risk. And the great thing is, with all these numbers that we've just used, we can actually work out a nice little risk return table to figure out how risky a shot has to be for it to not be worth going for that extra yardage. And so I put that together in this table right here. There's a lot of percentages and stuff. Don't worry about it, I have a graph for this too. So we'll get there in a sec. Basically, what this table shows is how much risk are you willing to take or could we be willing to take to get that extra yardage that we have listed up top? Basically, at what point would the extra risk not really be worth it? You might as well be further back in the fairway because it's just too high a risk to go forward. So this is what it looks like in a graph. And basically what it shows is the blue line here is an extra 10 yards. So you're willing to take a lower risk for 10 yards, a slightly higher risk for 20 yards, higher risk for 30 and so on. And the numbers are up and down because that's how data looks, but you can draw a rough approximation and that number that I took out some of the outliers and put in some numbers, it's interesting. They're actually a pretty kind of nice little progression. So 15%, 30%, 45%, 60%, 75%. That's kind of great. Nice little, nice little formula for us. So for an extra 10 yards, up to a 15% chance of hitting the rough, the numbers work out about even. The same for 20 yards. In 20 yards, if there is an extra 30% chance of hitting the rough, the numbers are about even. If that percentage is lower, we should go for it. It's a positive stroke scan scenario. And then from 30 yards, 45%, 40 yards, 60% and so on. So this is for the rough and this one here is for the bunkers. Same thing, except the numbers are a little bit lower because bunkers are harder to hit out of. And even here we see there's a nice clean little progression from 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. If you, uh, you know, kind of squint and approximate the numbers approximately, hmm, it works. Approximate approximately, that's a new thing I do. So this is great. So now we have a data-driven answer about whether I should wail on the ball on the 18th hole. And so if we look at this here, <laughs> What I can do is I can swing a little harder and get an extra 10 yards. I usually land somewhere around here and swing a little harder, there's a tailwind. It's not really going that much farther, maybe like say 10 yards. But what happens is because I've got OB on the right here, getting that extra 10 yards means I need to aim a little farther left because if I 
hit the ball, you know, a little bit offline that my miss is often fade, that could go OB. So for me to try to hit the ball a little bit harder, I'm gonna start aiming more left, which brings more rough into play. At that point, now the rough starts becoming an extra, say 20, 30% in my line versus previously it wasn't as much. So 20, 30% more rough likelihood for a 10 yard gain doesn't work with our formula, right? Our cutoff for 10 yards was 15%. Okay. Makes sense. Shouldn't be wailing on the ball. I don't like that answer, but I, I will. I will have to suffer through. <laughs> I'll have to suffer through it and go with that. That's a good answer for this situation. Let's do another example or two to see how things go. So here is the ninth hole at TPC Harding Park in San Francisco. And this hole plays sometimes as a short or par five. You can get on in two, depending on how the wind's blowing that day. Or sometimes it could be long if the tees are back, et cetera, et cetera. So let's assume that we normally hit a 250 yard drive, but we can really lean on it to get to say 270. Well, at 250, we're almost making it to the fairway bunkers here. At 270, we're definitely making it into the fairway bunkers. And so now the fairway bunkers are starting to cover a lot of the landing area, probably like a third or more of the landing area, because you're definitely not only looking at the fairway from 270 yards, there's the rough and, and the bunkers come into play. And because there's real trouble on the far left, it makes sense to kind of aim a little bit more to the right. So now the bunkers are starting to take even more of that space. So for that extra 20 yards, we're actually bringing in probably like 30, 40% bunkers into play, which doesn't make any sense because our rule of thumb is for 20 yards, 20% for bunkers is the maximum rest that we're willing to take. Okay, so fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Don't wanna do that. In this case, unless we can carry those bunkers, the best answer is to lay up. And let's do a short par four because that's kind of where a lot of us tend to get double-minded on whether to go for it or lay up. This is the 10th hole from, again, from my local course at Moffitt, and it's about 300 yards from tee to green. That means you can you can hit a driver. There's usually a headwind, so making it to the green, you're gonna have to hit probably over, well over 300 yards to get there. Or you could hit something like a three iron and lay up, say maybe 200, 220 yards in the fairway. And this is something I've been experimenting with a decent amount recently. I'm trying to figure out whether I should hit something like a three iron or three wood versus going for it with driver, but I haven't landed on a good answer just yet. But let's see how it works with the formula that we just came up with. So I can hit a three iron in the fairway or hit a driver, which will end up somewhere kind of in this area. Now, because there's actually no trouble, no real trouble on the left-hand side, I'll probably aim slightly more left, hit this driver. It's unlikely to make it to the green. And so while the bunker does come into play, it only takes up about 10 to 15 percent, maybe 20 percent of the total space. There's a little bit of rough there, but not very much at all. So I'm not super concerned about that. Even if the bunker took up, let's say, an additional 20 percent of the risk of hitting this bunker, it actually, for the extra 50 yard delta between hitting a 220 yard three iron and a 270 yard driver, it makes sense to hit the driver because for 50 yards versus the bunker number that we have, we're willing to take up to a 50 percent risk of being in that bunker. Also, there's a little bit of nuance here because it's a greenside bunker, although there is a chance of having a plug lie or being in a tough spot where you have to wedge out. But because it's a greenside bunker, not a fairway bunker, you're likely to get closer to the flag. So like I said previously, lots of little nuances, but from probability perspective, in this case, the best answer is to let the big dog eat. Very happy with that answer. I am so happy with that answer. All right, let's do one more short par four because it doesn't always work out this way. And so I wanna make sure we cover that the final base here. So this here is the 13th hole at Corica Park in Alameda, which is just across the bay from San Francisco. This is a short par four. You need to hit about 200 yards to get past the short bunkers and take them out of play. And then once you get to about like 250-ish, you start getting more bunkers into play. And as you get closer, you'll notice everything narrows. On the left-hand side, you actually end up with a little bit of OB. It's a lot of OB actually, but yeah, whatever. Sounds like a little bit better when you say a little bit of OB. <laughs> On the right-hand side, you've got this little slope. So it's kind of a tough spot to be in if you miss the fairway on the right-hand side as it's some pretty penalizing rough. And there's options here. So you could hit like say a 210, 220 yard three iron to kind of just get it past those bunkers. You could hit a three wood to get closer to the next set of bunkers. Or you could hit driver and try to negotiate those bunkers and make your way all the way up to the green. So going for it means you could be say 20 to 40 yards closer, but it does increase the probability of you ending up in those bunkers or being in the rough on the right. There's just not a lot of space to kind of land that ball and make it all work. And also these bunkers kind of more like fairway bunkers are actually even worse than good fairway bunkers because they're about 40-ish yards from the center of the green. So a little sketchy there. So here the probability of being in a bunker or heavy rough goes way up, say well over 50, 60%. And given the formula that we have for bunkers from 20 yards, 20%, that's way higher. Even 40 yards, 40%, it's still higher. So it doesn't make sense. So the right answer here is to lay up, get somewhere between that first set and second set of bunkers, and then hit a nice wedge onto the green, birdie, happy, move on. So much easier than trying to go for eagle, 
miss the green, end up being OB, taking a drop, and then double, triple bogey in that hole. I'm not saying I've done that before. So for those of you who use Decade Golf or listen to Scott Fawcett, what we've come up with today is mostly in line with his point of view that you should pretty much always hit driver unless penalty stroke hazards are coming into play. Kind of makes sense given that some of the data we got was from Scott Fawcett. So yeah, it kind of makes sense. While this does mostly fit with that, it's important to note that A, we made some assumptions about like being on the green, about proximity of the hole, all this other stuff. So there's some minor assumptions in there and you also do need to adjust for the course that you're playing. Like for example, at the US Open at LA Country Club a few weeks ago. That rough was absurd. And so you saw a ton of irons off the tee, even though these guys can hit the ball a mile, right? Even for that extra yardage, the rough was so rough that they were gonna end up, no pun intended, that they were gonna end up having to wedge out and hit a third shot onto the green anyway. And so it just wasn't worth taking the risk. Now as amateurs, we don't see those kinds of conditions as often. I mean, the last time I played a US Open, it wasn't nearly as bad. But anyway, Sometimes you do have to adjust for the course, like maybe you're playing a place where there's a ton of trees and so if you hit into the trees, odds are you're going to have to wedge out because you just won't have a line to, to, the, to the green. In that case, maybe play a little bit more conservative. Or maybe you have a place where there's a ton of bunkers or maybe you're not so good at bunkers and so you got to give the bunkers a little bit more respect. Nothing wrong with that, just something to keep in mind. Okay, that may have felt like a lot of math. No biggie, let's summarize. Here's what we got. So first, should we swing harder for that extra 10 or 20 yards? Mm, 10 yards? Maybe it the gains are kind of small at 10 yards and it's kind of a take it or leave it Especially if you're starting to bring more rough or bunkers into play You're probably better off at the shorter yardage But as you start getting the 20 yard range and higher 30 to 50 your 20 yards now It starts getting a little more interesting and we're willing to tolerate a little bit more rough a little bit more sand 30 to 50, there's a lot more tolerance we have because the value of being 50 yards closer to the green is actually significant for us. And so here's the formula. For rough, for every 10 yards of additional yardage, we can tolerate 15% of risk. Uh, it's kind of a rough number based on like looking at the yardage book or looking at a map and trying to figure it out or when you're standing there on the tier like, oh, there's gonna be a lot of rough, a little bit of rough. You can figure it out. But the simple ratio is for every 10 yards, it's 15% risk that we're willing to take. When it comes to bunkers, it's less risk because bunkers are hard to hit out of. And so for every 10 yards of distance we might get, we can take an additional 10%, not 15 like rough, just 10% risk with the bunkers. It's also important to note here that none of these numbers are exact, right? Like all the numbers we used, all the data we had to start with, there's always, you know, inaccuracies, there's like luck, there's all this other stuff that comes into play. But from a rule of thumb perspective, these are kind of useful to use and they give you a little bit more of a statistical basis to lean on versus just kind of guessing whether you should lay up or, or go for the green on a hole. And finally, one of the big things I learned from all of the yellow bars on all those graphs is that bunkers can be real score killers. So it pays to learn to suck less at them and learn how to hit out of them. I made this video about the best bunker advice I found on YouTube and I think you'll like it too. So maybe check it out. And that's it. Thanks for joining. Keep hanging out being cool and I'll see you in the next one.